Game started. Okay, BKV2 plays D4. Let's try Knight F6 and maybe get into a um, Nimzo Indian if we can. Yes, we get a Nimzo Indian. Okay. Ah, oh, he plays Bishop D2. That's a bit unusual. The main moves are E3, Queen D2, Knight F3. Don't know what Bishop D2. What its status is, like is it a good move or not? Just uh, protects the knight, so if I take, then there's no um, pawn damage. So that's just castle. I mean, now that his bishop's on d2, I don't even know if I want to take. Let's retreat. Ah, well, he gets to play e5 then. Okay, I need to play d5. He gets to play e4. I play d5. Takes, takes, takes. Knight takes, knight takes, queen takes is good. So if I play uh, d5, he'll push e5. Then I can retreat my knight to d7, I guess. Or d7 or <clears throat> e8 is the question. On d7, it blocks the bishop. So let's go to e8 and play uh, f6. Just use this kind of typical undermining strategy. Yeah, on, on uh, d7 it blocks uh, also the view of this uh, pawn. So he could play cd, ed, and then maybe push on. Oh, but he's moving the f pawn. Okay, I'm going to play f6. That's my plan. And I'm going to take, because I want to open up a file here. <clears throat> and I assume he's going to take back with the pawn. We'll see. Oh, he takes back with that pawn. OK. It's a little bit interesting. So I could play d4 here, kick the knight, and then uh, d4 and then c4, d4 and then c5, and his knight could go to uh, b5 and then into d6 where I would trade it off. So the knight could come here, he could also play, and I think that's the best way to play here, d4 to kick the knight, and c5 to get some space. And then I can play my knight to c6. This pawn is still protected by the bishop. And I just have to uh, get my knight on e8 back into the game. So maybe it'll go to uh, g7. So if I play uh, g6, for example, knight g7 to f5. It's a way to get the knight into the game, and it's looking at this uh, e3 square. Could be a good post for it. And in the meantime, um, White's uh, rerouting his knight yet again. Yet again, I don't know, maybe it's the first time. It's, it's gone on a journey, though. Here to here to here. And it can, oh, it can blockade on um, d3. That's probably a good square for it. Um, and I don't see a way to exploit his... Uh, king position. I mean, his king is still in the center, and he's not playing to castle anytime soon, apparently. A knight on d3, if that's where it's going. Server announcement. Block his light-squared bishop. Ah, so he gets his bishop to d3. Okay, so that makes um, knight f4 look more attractive. Knight f5. It might prompt him to play g5, g4 kicking my knight. So let's leave it here. Let's um, develop some of these other pieces and see what he does. I want to be prepared in case he plays uh, g4 and f5 pushes here. It's good to have the knight guarding this square rather than sitting there and being subject to a tempo. Now, can I do anything with this dark squared bishop?
Not yet. Okay, so uh, let's make some space for the light squared bishop at least. Um, question is, do I want to play a6, b5, or just b6? a6, b5, rip b8, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, rip takes. So I can think of getting that in. Let's try it. I would have to do it in the other order, a6, rip b8, and then b5. Let's uh, put my queen on this square. It's, it's looking after um, g6 in case of a bishop sack there. And it's also protecting the knight in case this file opens up the c file. It looks like white's getting uh, some activity here. So it's an interesting way of playing in the opening. It has worked out pretty well for him, I'd say. So how would white proceed with the attack? Maybe knight to uh, g3 and, and then um, just f5. Maybe even a sacrifice on f5. Or, okay, yeah, knight g3. So you can think of going here or here, I suppose. Okay. And I still need time to prepare this uh, b5 move. So I'm a bit slow here. Let's see if he manages to find a way to break through before I get myself organized for some counterplay. Well, I am putting pressure on e5 here. So he pushes. It's defended by the knight. Uh, maybe this is his idea. Okay, so he can jump from there. He can jump into either. F, <clears throat> F6 or D6. I will just trade off this bishop when that happens. Can't let him hold me hostage here. And now, um, if he doesn't take on uh, b5, then maybe I will take and play bishop to uh, b7. Take, I suppose knight a5 is possible too, but I guess I don't see the point of it right now. Well, it's good. He's, he's stopping to think. Ah, so he is going to just defend the pawn. So I don't, I can't leave that pawn hanging there. So let's play this and see how he takes back. Did take back with the bishop. So now this guy has got one attacker, one defender and it's pinned to my king. So uh, that makes this move uh, f5 a bit more dangerous. I can only take with this pawn, uh, but it's still adequately defended. Okay, so let's go here with the bishop. I'm gonna play my knight back to um, d8 to defend that e6 pawn and then open up this diagonal for my bishop. Yeah, so it had two defenders until I moved the bishop away. Now it only has one. The knight d8 will be an extra defender. <clears throat> now, is he threatening to take here? King takes. Um, there's no immediate tactic. This is defended by the queen still. Okay, so yeah, just defend... Um, Defend e6. And maybe take off one of these uh, nasty knights. Uh, 
Or a bishop to um, bishop d5 is possible here too, I guess. Bishop takes, pawn takes is yeah, maybe not so good because then he has these pawns crashing through. Okay, how about if I kick this knight with uh, h6? Go there, 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 or you could go back. Just want to free up my knights to be able to move. And then I also want to play king to h7, unpinning the e pawn. And then maybe I can get a knight f4 finally. Knight f5. And we're down to three and a half minutes here. Got to watch that. Make sure I don't run out of time. <laughs> Happened in a game not too long ago. So knight to f5 to e3. He would probably just take it with the bishop. Queen. Is he going after this pawn over here? If he takes it, I, I will win the uh, b-pawn, so I don't think that's a great idea. Let's, let's put my knight on um, f5. I've been thinking about that for a while and see if he does get prompted to play g4. Funny, this bishop here seems to be somewhat useless. The bishop on e7 blocks the queen, defends the c-pawn, but doesn't have a lot of scope. I wonder if there's a way to improve it. Oh, he did play g5. Okay. Now I have to decide here. How do I um, deal with this? <clears throat> How about knight h4? It hits his knight and... Um, gives the bishop something useful to do. And uh, if the knight just moves away, what do I do? I'm not sure, but where can his knight go anyway? Yeah, his knight doesn't have any squares to move to. So, uh, so I guess I'll get to trade for that knight. Getting rid of a knight, I think, will help me. Yeah, now this comes with the tempo, it hits the rook there. Of course, his rook can come over on the G file, maybe you know, do something useful there. So what's the next step? Take off this knight? Or get this uh, knight developed somewhere? Hmm, 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 hmm. Maybe I need to retreat the bishop, I guess. If I'm not going to take his knight, I want to deal, be able to deal with this threat of knight to, uh, <clears throat> knight to f6 or knight to d6. Okay, two and a half minutes. Still a pretty tense game. Okay, he's advancing with the pawns. Now, if I push uh, g4 or uh, g5 or h5, g5 or h5, you can take and open up this diagonal. That doesn't look very pleasant. Let's get rid of this knight. <laughs> I think I can't take it anymore. I have to get rid of the knight. And then I can uh, grab this pawn. It 
It's a bit of a decoy maybe to lure my bishop away so his knight could jump in here. Or maybe he just missed it, the pawn was hanging. But it still looks kind of dangerous. What do I do after, uh, yeah. After that rook move, I have to retreat the bishop. I guess it is still okay. Seems a bit scary. Queen is defending g6. The king is defending h6. Um, queen and king. Maybe knight f7 is possible too. Although it drops the uh, e-pawn. The knight is defending the e-pawn. Hmm. Yes, it's just awkward. Okay, so let's take... Check. Ooh, that's interesting. Forgot about the bishop. <laughs> Let's take a look at this. Yeah, yeah, when he pushed the pawn forward, it opened up the diagonal of the bishop. Okay, well, that's good. So his queen is hanging, but uh, of course, I have check. to respond to the check. And uh, the bishop is covering these squares. So only one move, actually. And then he takes there. Yeah, now this is very dangerous. So he's going to play the pawn to um, f6. If I don't do anything, he'll play pawn to f6, forking these two guys. So I have to uh, take. I guess I should take with the rook. It's just too strong to have those pawns. This might lose anyway, but uh, well, sometimes you're just not winning. <laughs> you gotta face, just gotta face it. Sometimes it's not a win. Check. It's already lost, perhaps. Yeah. So here, where can I? Ah, uh, yeah. So queen here is guarded by his rook. Rook is guarded by the bishop. Bishop here, and queen takes. So king has to move. Can't go here. Can't go here. So his only move is here. And then rook here is checkmate. Checkmate. Queen there is checkmate too. All right. Well, that was a really good game by BKV2. So I will uh, upload this and do a postmortem. See you guys later. Bye.